shooting at a Mobile gas station caught on camera. Team of thieves stealing catalytic converters in broad daylight. Cameras are everywhere today, silently recording events as they happen, from accidents to the mundane, such as people simply passing by. However, in this video, we'll be focusing on times when surveillance cameras had captured crimes as they took place, from kidnappings to other violent crimes. Join us as we have a look at 15 real crimes that security cameras caught. Road rage ending with 11 shots fired into a car. It all begins when Popper, driving a white Toyota Corolla, changed lanes and cut off another driver, Rene Suarez, who was driving a black Honda Civic. Suarez was not happy about this and began to tailgate Popper, honking his horn and flashing his lights. Popper would then slam on his brakes, causing Suarez to swerve and almost hit another car. Suarez then threw a water bottle at Popper's passenger window, which made a loud noise, and Popper thought that he was being shot at, so he decided to take matters into his own hands. That's when he reached for his gun, which he had in a holster under the seat, and prepared to fire back. He adjusted his seat and rolled down his window, all while Suarez had pulled up next to him on the left side. Popper then fired 11 shots at Suarez's car, hitting the windshield, the door, and the tire. Suarez sped away and called 911, while Popper also pulled over and reported the incident. He claimed that he had acted in self-defense and was fearing for his life. You can watch the entire thing unfold in this amazing dash camera video that Popper's attorney had released to the media. It shows four different angles of the shooting from within Popper's car, from behind his car, from behind Suarez's car, and from the side of the highway. You can see how Popper calmly aims and fires his gun while Suarez tries to escape, and also hear the gunshots and the glass shattering. It's like something out of an action film. The Murder of a British Woman Lorraine Cox was a 32-year-old woman who had gone missing in September of 2020 after a night out with friends in Exeter. Azam Mangori, a 24-year-old man from Dartmouth, would be found guilty of her murder and having prevented a lawful burial. He left her body in his flat for a week before dismembering her. Her remains would be found in bin bags in an alley behind his flat and in some woodlands about six miles away. Mangori had followed Cox through the streets and persuaded her to go to his flat above a kebab shop. He was an Iraqi Kurd who had been denied asylum in December of 2018 and had told the court that he panicked because he feared being deported. He claimed that she drank spirits and smoked a mystery drug in his room before losing consciousness and then dying. However, prosecutor Simon Laws would call him a fluent and determined liar, saying that he had smothered her with a t-shirt. After she was murdered, Mangori used a SIM card from her phone to send messages to her family, partner, and friends, all in an attempt to show that she was still alive. He also looked at amputation videos in the days before her disappearance and was caught on camera in shops buying supplies to help him dispose of her body. This included bin bags, tape, a suitcase, an air purifier, just to hide the smell. He had also purchased items that included a trowel after having viewed a website titled How to Dig a Grave by Hand. Daylight Robbery of Pharmaceutical Store by a Gang of Thieves This incident would be captured on video footage showing robbers ransacking the shelves and counters of the Wellspring Pharmacy. According to the Oakland Police Department, the pharmacy robbery was one of nearly two dozen robberies and critical incidents that occurred that day. The police are still investigating the case and have not released any information about the suspects or the amount of stolen goods. The pharmacy robbery was actually part of a series of flash mob attacks that would hit several high-end stores in the Bay Area over that weekend. On the previous Friday, a Louis Vuitton store in San Francisco had been looted by a large group of people who had broken the windows and emptied out the store of its luxury merchandise. Eight people would be arrested in connection to that looting, and then the next night, a Nordstrom store in Walnut Creek was stormed by around 80 people dressed in ski masks and armed with crowbars. They smashed glass doors and windows and grabbed items from display racks and shelves. The flash mob robberies have sparked outrage and concern amongst local officials, business owners, and residents. 
They also raise questions about the security and safety of the retail sector in the Bay Area, especially during the holiday season. Some experts have suggested that the robbers may have been motivated by economic hardship, social media influence, or even opportunism, while others blame the lenient policies and laws that have reduced the penalties for shoplifting and theft. Brazen shoplifter stuffs stolen items in bag right in front of security. It's hard to believe what happened at a Walgreens store in San Francisco in June of 2021. A shoplifter was caught on video stealing items from the store in broad daylight while a security guard and another person just watched and filmed the whole thing. The thief didn't seem to care about being seen or even stopped, as he casually fills a garbage bag with goods from the shelves. He then rode away on his bicycle through the automatic doors as the guard made a weak attempt to grab the bag. The video would then be posted to social media by a reporter who had witnessed the shocking scene. She also tagged the San Francisco District Attorney, who is known for his progressive and lenient policies on crime. The video would go viral on social media, sparking outrage and debate over the city's crime problems and the role of the district attorney. Many people had criticized the security guard for not doing more to prevent the theft, while others blamed the store for not having better security measures. Some also questioned why the police never intervened or arrested the suspect, who was clearly identifiable from the footage. However, the most controversial aspect of the case was the response of the district attorney who defended his approach of focusing on serious and violent crimes rather than petty theft. He also claimed that he had not received any information or evidence from Walgreens or the police about the shoplifting case and that he could not file charges without it. He urged anyone with information to contact him in his office or to go to the police. Thieves Breaking Into Cars in Broad Daylight Robert Is Here is a popular tropical fruit stand in Homestead, Florida that attracts many tourists and locals who want to enjoy its fresh produce and smoothies. However, it also attracts some unwanted visitors who want to take advantage of its busy parking lot and steal from the customers' cars. One such incident took place Mother's Day of 2018 when a thief broke into several vehicles and stole valuables like cameras, wallets, passports, and even plane tickets. The crime would be recorded by a surveillance camera that the owner of the fruit stand had installed to deter to catch criminals. And the surveillance video also shows the thief arriving at the fruit stand in a white van wearing a blue shirt and khaki pants. He parks his van near the entrance of the fruit stand and walks around the parking lot looking for potential targets. Then he spots an SUV with a bag visible on the back seat and approaches it from behind. He uses a crowbar to smash the rear window of the SUV and grab the bag, and then returns to his van and drives away. The video shows the thief was not alone. He had an accomplice who was waiting for him in the passenger seat. The accomplice was wearing a black shirt and baseball cap with a beard and sunglasses and helped the thief to load the stolen bag into the van, and then the two drove away. The video was posted to YouTube by the owner, who wanted to expose the thief and warn his customers about the risks of leaving valuables in their car. He also contacted the police, giving them the video evidence, and said that he had invested in 40 cameras in order to protect his business and customers from such crimes in the future, which had actually been happening for years in the South Dade tourist attraction. He said that he was not afraid to tell people that he had a problem and that he was actively trying to fix it. The video would receive many views and comments from people who were outraged by the thief's actions while also sympathizing with the owner and his customers. Some people recognized the thief and his van and gave tips to the police. Others would praise the owner for his initiative and courage in installing more cameras and sharing the video. CCTV Video Helps Catch a Killer one of the most recent and prominent examples of how CCTV has helped to catch a killer is the case of Sarah Everard, a 33-year-old woman who was abducted, raped, and murdered by a police officer in London in March of 2023. She would be walking home from a friend's house when she was kidnapped by Wayne Cousins, who hired a car and posed as a taxi driver. Cousins then drove her to a remote location where he assaulted and killed her, later burning her body and attempting to dump it in a woodland. The police had launched a massive search operation for Everard, using various sources of information and technology, such as phone records, social media, forensic analysis, and witness statements. 
However, one of the most crucial tools that had enabled them to solve the case was CCTV footage. This footage from various locations along Everard's route home would show her walking on the streets wearing a green raincoat, white trousers, and blue shoes. The footage also showed her crossing a road and standing next to a white car with the hazard lights flashing. This car would later be identified as a rental vehicle that Cousins had used to abduct her. The police traced the car back to Cousins, who was serving as an officer in the Metropolitan Police's Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Command. They also found CCTV footage of him visiting a Tesco store in West London shortly before having kidnapped her. The video footage shows him buying items that he would later use to dispose of her body, such as petrol and a lighter. Furthermore, CCTV footage from a passing bus captured him driving away with Everard in the backseat of his car and showed him driving back to his home in Kent, where he had transferred Everard's body to another vehicle. He was also caught on camera in the days after the murder, visiting various locations such as DIY stores, petrol stations, and car parks. Robbers Wearing Tin Foil As Disguise some bank robbers may resort to more unconventional and bizarre means of disguise, such as wrapping themselves in tinfoil. This was the case of two would-be robbers who attempted to break into a bank in southern Brazil in March of 2023. Those robbers wore head-to-toe aluminum foil suits, hoping to fool the alarm sensor of the bank. However, they had failed to notice the internal security cameras, which were recording their every move and alerted police. The robbers broke down one of the walls in the bank late at night and then crawled through the bank in their shiny outfits heading towards the main safe. However, their plan would be foiled by the bank's central monitoring system, which had seen them on the screen and called the police immediately. The surveillance video showed two men in silver suits, resembling astronauts or aliens, moving slowly on the floor. The police arrived at the scene shortly after having received the call and they surrounded the bank in search for the suspects. However, they found no trace of them inside. They had already fled before the police arrived, possibly warned by one or two other people who were acting as lookouts. The police would then trace the car to one of the robbers. Teachers caught on camera offering better grades for affairs with students. This disturbing video out of Asia shows a teacher in his office trying to coerce his student into having sex with him in exchange for better grades. This took place in 2017, however, it is far from being an isolated incident. There are many other examples of teachers abusing their power and exploiting their students. For instance, in the United States, a 37-year-old teacher named Michael Tietel had a secret relationship with a 17-year-old student for 18 months until he was finally caught and prosecuted. Abduction Caught on Camera Carlicia Freeland Gaither was a 22-year-old nursing assistant who was violently abducted off of a Philadelphia street in November of 2014. Her kidnapping would be caught on camera by a nearby CCTV system, and that footage would show her walking along the street in Germantown around 9.40 p.m. after having gotten off the bus. She was approached by a man who grabbed her and dragged her to a parked car, and she then struggled and screamed, dropping her cell phone and breaking the car's rear window. The man forced her into the back seat and then drove away. The entire incident on camera lasts less than a minute. Police would release the footage to the media and the public in hopes of having generated leads and tips. They also offered a $10,000 reward for any information which would lead to her safe return home. That footage would be widely circulated on social media and news outlets, drawing attention and sympathy from people all across the country. Many people had recognized the car as a Ford Taurus, which had helped to narrow down the search. Police would also analyze the CCTV footage for clues about the suspect's identity and motive. They noticed that he was wearing a dark hooded jacket, dark pants, and white sneakers, and also observed that he had a limp and walked with a cane. They had speculated that he might have been injured or disabled, which could explain why he was targeting a young and vulnerable woman. Cattle Thieves Caught on Camera In Florida, one of the states with the highest number of cattle theft, a 77-year-old rancher named Ed Davis became a frequent victim of this crime. Over the years, he had lost dozens of his cattle to rustlers who would sneak into his pastures and load them onto trucks. 
He had installed fencing and gates and locks to protect his herd, but to no avail. One time, the thieves even stole cows from a second pasture while police were searching in the first one. In December of 2011, Davis had noticed that about 12 of his cows were missing and contacted the authorities. He also decided to take matters into his own hands. That's when he mounted a hidden CCTV camera on a tree near his pasture in the hopes that the camera would capture the faces and even the license plates of the culprits or at least deter them from having come back. His plan all worked out when a few days later he checked the footage and saw four men driving a white pickup truck onto his property. They had cut the fence, lured the cows with feed, and then loaded them onto a trailer, and they drove away with 17 cows that were worth around $20,000. Davis immediately called the police and showed them the video. The police recognized one of the suspects as Carl Smith, a 44-year-old man who had a history of cattle theft and other crimes. The police would then track Smith down and arrest him at his home, Davis was relieved that his CCTV camera had helped to catch the thieves and recover his stolen cows. He said that he was glad that justice had been served, and he hoped that other ranchers would learn from his experience and install cameras on their own properties. Naked Thirsty Serial Burglar in Georgia This burglar, whose name was not released, has been dubbed the Thirsty Naked Serial Burglar by the media because of his unusual modus operandi. He would break into businesses at night, strip off all of his clothing, drink beverages from the fridge, and then steal cash and other items. He would also leave his clothing behind and DNA evidence at some of his crime scenes. He targeted restaurants, bars, salons, and other establishments in the Buckhead and Midtown areas of Atlanta. The police had been on the lookout for the burglar for months, but they had no leads or suspects. And so they decided to use CCTV as a tool to track down and identify the burglar. They had installed hidden cameras in some of the businesses that had been previously burglarized, all in the hopes that the burglar would return. They also reviewed the footage from existing cameras in the area, looking for any clues or patterns, and their strategy would pay off in April of 2023 after they received an alert on one of the hidden cameras that someone had broken into a restaurant on Peachtree Street. That's when they rushed to the scene, and found the burglar inside, naked and drinking a soda. Gay Couple Beat Up in Philadelphia The attack on a gay couple in Philadelphia in September of 2014 became a shocking and violent hate crime that would spark public outrage and a social media manhunt. The incident would also be captured by a surveillance camera that provided crucial evidence for the police investigation and the prosecution of the suspects. This surveillance camera was located at the intersection of 16th and Chancellor, just south of Walnut Street in the Center City neighborhood of Philadelphia. The camera records the movements of a group of intoxicated 20-somethings who were walking in the area at around 10.45 that night. The group consisted of three men and three women, who were later identified as Philip R. Williams, age 24, Catherine G. Knott, age 24, Kevin J. Harrigan, age 26, Elizabeth Foley, age 23, Brian Doherty, age 23, and Patrick Waldron, age 26. The camera also captured the moment when the group encountered the two victims, a 27 and 28-year-old gay man who were walking from a restaurant. The surveillance footage was released by the police department five days after the attack because police had hoped that the public would be able to recognize the suspects and provide tips to identify them. The footage would be widely circulated on social media, especially Twitter, where users began to analyze the clothing and appearance of the suspects. Police officer shoots during a confrontation for no reason. Sean Graber was a South Carolina state trooper who shot an unarmed black man during a routine traffic stop in September of 2014. The incident would be recorded by a dashboard camera in his patrol car, which had showed the sequence of events that led to the shooting of LeVar Edward Jones and the aftermath. According to the video, Gruber had pulled Jones over at a gas station in Columbia for not wearing a seatbelt. Jones had just stepped out of his truck and was walking toward the convenience store when Gruber approached him and asked for his driver's license. Jones turned and reached back into his car to get his license as instructed. However, Gruber apparently mistook Jones's movements as a threat and shouted, get out of the car, get out of the car while drawing his gun. 
He would then fire four shots at Jones, who stumbled away from the car with his hands raised. Jones was hit in the hip and then fell to the ground, bleeding and in pain. The video also captured a conversation between Gruber and Jones after the shooting. Jones repeatedly asked him why it had shot him and said that he was just trying to get his license as he was being instructed. The officer tried to justify his actions by saying that Jones dove headfirst back into his car and that he didn't know what he was doing. He then called for backup and an ambulance, and while handcuffing Jones and checking his wound, Jones continued to express his disbelief and agony, all while the officer apologized and said that he was scared. The video of the shooting would be released to the public in September of 2014 by the South Carolina Department of Public Safety. The director, Leroy Smith, said that he had fired the officer after having reviewed the video footage and finding that he had violated the agency's policies. Boston Bomber Captured on Surveillance Video The Boston Bomber was Zokar Zarnaev, who along with his brother planted two pressure cooker bombs near the finish line of the Boston Marathon in April of 2013. The bombs killed three people, one of which was a child, and also injured 260 others. The Tsarnaev brothers were identified and tracked down by authorities with the help of surveillance cameras that had captured their movements before and after the bombing. The first clue came from a department store security camera, which showed the brothers walking near the marathon route with backpacks. The FBI would release the images of the suspects to the public and ask for help in their identifying them. Bear Caught Twice Robbing the Same Gas Station Bears are known for their love of honey, but it seems that some of them have developed a sweet tooth for chocolate as well. A 500-pound black bear has been repeatedly caught on camera stealing candy from a gas station in Kings Beach, Florida, a small town on the shore of Lake Tahoe. The bear's exploits have gone viral on social media. The first incident occurred when a bear entered the convenience store, and the surveillance camera recorded a customer outside of the shop slapping the bear's rump as it entered before quickly retreating. Then, in an even scarier moment, the video shows a store employee trying to stop the bear from walking further inside. The bear snaps towards the man, who then backs away. It then proceeds to grab a bag of Snickers bars from the candy aisle and leaves the store without paying. The next day, that same bear returned to the store where this time he was more relaxed, spending about 15 minutes inside, lounging on the floor and snacking away on candy and crackers. He also helped himself to some cookies and a pie, and the store's cameras show him casually walking out with his mouth full of treats. That's all for these crazy crimes caught on camera. Which one of them was your favorite and which one shocked you the most? Let me know about it in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video for more like it in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.